one of the most common problems that I see on home inspections, especially on an older house, are electrical outlets that aren't grounded. Until about 1977, grounding wasn't required, so most houses I inspect that are pre-1977 do have ungrounded outlets, unless they've been rewired at some point. What I want to show you in this video is how to correct an outlet or outlets that are not grounded without having to rewire your whole house. But you have three choices, basically, when you have ungrounded outlets. One is rewiring the house, which will cost thousands of dollars. The second and third options are basically the same, uh, and that is installing a ground fault uh, circuit interrupter, which basically provides the same amount of safety as if the outlet were grounded. Now, before I get too far into it, let me explain what the purpose of grounding is. Let's suppose you have a washing machine and there's a problem with it. A wire comes loose on the inside and it's touching the frame of the washing machine. Well, the entire washing machine will now be energized. And if somebody walks up to it and touches it to put a load of laundry in it or whatever, they have the potential to be electrocuted. So when you have a grounded outlet, basically you have a ground wire running from that washing machine back to the electric panel. So the very second that that wire comes loose and touches the frame, a high current is sent back to the panel through that ground wire or the equipment grounding conductor and that causes the breaker to trip the power to the washing machine and thus it's no longer a danger uh, to electrocute people. So that's what grounding does for you. Well you can achieve essentially the same thing by installing a ground fault circuit interrupter. It's not going to cause a breaker to trip but if there is ever a ground fault which is basically an unintentional short circuit uh, to ground and that could be a uh, current flowing through a person which can cause electrocution, the ground fault circuit interrupter will trip and kill power to that outlet and therefore protect uh, someone from being electrocuted. So that's what grounding and ground fault circuit interrupters do. So let me show you what we're going to do. Okay, so we're in this house. It's a vacant house. I chose it because it's a lot easier to work with. And if you look here, this one light indicates that this is an ungrounded outlet. I've checked uh, all these outlets in this room, they're all ungrounded. One light. So this entire room is full of ungrounded outlets. And most likely, all these outlets are on the same circuit. So you, what will happen is one of these outlets, and normally it's going to be the outlet closest to the breaker panel. The breaker panel's out this way. So I'm suspecting it's either this outlet here, or this outlet here that's the first one in the chain. So assuming it's this one, you'll have the power coming from the panel to this outlet, then another wire running from that outlet to this outlet, another wire running from this outlet to that outlet, and so on. So every outlet, except the last one in the chain, should have two wires to it. Let me show you what I'm talking about using this diagram. So here's two walls in a room. The gray thing up there to the right is the electric panel, and I'm showing wires being run from the panel to the first outlet, then to the second, third, fourth, and you can see that every outlet has two sets of wires, one supplying power and one leaving that outlet to take power to the next one. But here, the last one in the chain only has one wire. So the one with one wire is going to be the last one in the chain. Now, the way I've shown it in this diagram in, in this animation is not always how houses are done. Uh, wires can be run any direction, but typically they'll run from one to the next to the next to the next. Now, if the house has been uh, remodeled and they've run new wires and things things can get a little bit confusing but in general they try to use as little wire as possible so they run from the panel to one outlet to the next to the next so this kind of gives an overview of how typical wiring is done so what we're going to do is figure out which is the first outlet in the chain and then we're going to install a ground fault circuit interrupter on that outlet and that gfi will then protect all the other outlets and it'll make it basically just as safe as if all the outlets were grounded Okay, so we've turned the breaker off and I'm about to start figuring out where the circuit comes into this room, where the power comes in, and we'll know which outlet it is we need to replace with the GFI. And one thing I also want to say is uh, you can do this one of two ways. You can either replace the, the first outlet in the chain or you can put in a ground fault circuit interrupter breaker uh, in the breaker panel. And I'm not going to get into that, but that is certainly an option. Uh, GFI breakers run around $50 to $60. Uh, if you feel comfortable with electrical work and if you've ever messed with breakers, uh, that's certainly an option for you. Uh, but again, I'm not getting into that in this video. Uh, I want to show you how to do the ground fault circuit interrupter uh, outlet. So let's get started.
what I want to do now is uh, start finding the first outlet in the chain. And as you can see, uh, we have to turn power off. Uh, this is dead. Before I mess with anything, I do want to double check that there's absolutely no power in here. So I've got my little voltage detector and it is showing that this is dead. So I'm going to pull this out of the wall. Okay, and sure enough, there are two sets of wires on this, this outlet. Uh, just to double check and also to show you uh, how you can find the last outlet in the chain, I'm going to come over here. And I'm not going to pull it out. But by looking in there, I can see only one set of wires. So this will be the, old, or the last outlet in this uh, room. So it is almost certain that this here is the first outlet in the chain. And what I'm going to do to prove that is I'm going to take the two wires loose. I'm going to just double check again. It always makes me nervous. Okay, so I'm going to cut these wires loose. Okay, so these two go together and these two go together. And what I'm going to do is turn the power back on and then we're going to see which one of these is the hot and which one is the one that uh, feeds the next outlet in the chain. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the power back on and what I'm going to do is just use my voltage detector to determine which, ones of, which one of these wires is the hot one. And just because the breaker box is back this way, these two come into the box from this direction. I'm guessing it's this one, and it is. This one has no power. So this is the one getting power from the breaker panel. Then this one will be feeding the outlet over there. Uh, one thing I want to uh, explain to you, because this was fairly easy to determine which one is the first one in the chain. But if this one weren't the first one in the chain, let's say I'd started uh, down in the middle of the room. Let's say I had... It wasn't so obvious. Let's say I started on this one. Okay, I think it'll be easier to explain with this diagram. So let's say we have no idea where the power comes into the room. So let's take the wires loose from the outlet that I have circled in black, and now we turn the power back on. Well, the ones to the left, circled in green, are going to be dead, and the ones to the right are going to have power. So we know that the power comes in somewhere to the right. So let's take another one loose, and let's just randomly select that one in the middle that I've now circled in black and we turn the power back on. Well, the one to the right of it is gonna be dead, but the one to the left is gonna have power. So by doing this, we can hone in on which one is the first outlet in the chain. And that's how you do it. You just have to go back and forth if it's not obvious. Now, in the case of the room that I'm actually doing, it is quite obvious, but I wanted to show you how you can go back and forth and determine pretty quickly which outlet is the first one in the daisy chain. Now, one thing I would do wanna throw out also is it's entirely possible that the wires supplying one room also supply another room. In this diagram, the blue outlets are serving the room that is facing forward, and then the red ones are providing power to the room facing away from us. So it's possible that you'll have to check two different rooms to find the first receptacle or outlet in the chain. I just wanted to throw that out there. One more thing you should do is when you have the breaker off, go around and check all the outlets in the room you're working on and in the rooms that are adjacent to it and figure out which all outlets are controlled by that one breaker because any of those could be the first outlet in the chain. So now that we know that this one is the first one in the chain, what we're going to do is hook up this ground fault circuit interrupter to it. But let me show you something on this. Almost all of these will come with yellow tape attached. I don't know if you can read this, but it says line. And then under here, it would say load. Line means that's the power coming in from the, the breaker panel. This is going to be where you connect the live wires. Any receptacles that you want to protect with this GFI will be connected under here. But the hot wires will be connected to the ones that's not covered by the tape, the one that's labeled line. And as you can see, you've got a gold screw and a silver screw. The hot wire, the black wire, will always connect to the gold screw, the, the white or neutral wire will always connect to the silver screw. So I'm gonna kill the power and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the power turned off. I'm just double checking before I touch any of these wires. And I'm just gonna scrape any notification. 
Uh, give me a little more off of that. Okay, so here's my GFI. This is the wire that brings the power in. So it's going to go under this gold screw, the one that's not covered by the tape, the one that says line. So these GFIs are very easy to install because you don't have to twist the wire, put it under a screw. You just slide it in there. Okay. And the neutral also, you'll do the same thing with the neutral. You always want to get these wires nice and tight because you definitely don't want a loose connection. Okay, so these are the two wires that feed the other outlets. So now we just need to remove the yellow tape and hook up the wires to the line side so that this GFI will protect all the outlets downstream. And after that, we're basically finished. Now, I didn't show this in the actual video, but I want to suggest that you tape around the outside of the receptacle to cover the screws before you put it back into a junction box that's metal because you don't want those screws coming in contact with that metal box. Okay, so now we have a GFI and hopefully it will fit into this box. works and that it protects all these other outlets so I'll be right back okay so we got the power turned back on and obviously the outlet uh, looks like it has no power I haven't reset it yet okay so it is it does have power and let's check these others to make sure they're working power it's live I'm not gonna go through all the others but we know if these two are good, it's going to continue around because they worked earlier. Now what I want to do is trip this, make sure it's dead, and then make sure that these are also dead, which they are. So now this entire room is essentially as safe as if we had run uh, new wiring through the walls uh, with the ground wire. Okay, so there's one last thing you need to do. You need to have your receptacles properly labeled. So this one obviously is uh, ground fault protected because it's a GFI outlet. But all the others in the room look like just regular outlets. So what you need to do, uh, these labels will come in every box of uh, GFIs that you purchase. So as you can see here, it says ground fault protected outlet, no equipment ground. You need both of those labels to go on the other outlets in the room. Okay, so now it's marked as ground fault protected, no equipment ground. So that's totally up to code. And I'll put labels on these others here in a minute. Uh, I sure appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thank you.